these riders know, Transpo can get you to school, to family, to your doctor's office, and more. For some folks, you know, when they don't have no uh, vehicle that, you know, uh, that they can really depend on, uh, Transpo, you know, comes in handy. Riders say the buses are on time, reliable, and clean. Yeah, it has its points. But it's not perfect. Galilea Macedo takes Transpo to school and says it's not too bad. As long as you just look at like the schedule and like work out ahead of time if you need to be somewhere. But between bus stop timing and transfers, Macedo was already an hour late to school when I caught up with her. And don't try to catch the bus late in the evening. Transpo stops running around 10 on weekdays. It doesn't run at all on Sundays. It's part of the reason Ian Waddell, a chef in downtown South Bend, stopped riding. There's a lot of the people I think who rely on a bus system aren't your nine to five workers. It's more people like me who get off work later or work on Sundays. Or. General Manager and CEO Amy Hill says she's aware of those concerns. Addressing them is her main focus. It's really to make sure, number one, that we're meeting the needs of the community and also that we're building our ridership base. But that work starts inside Transpo's offices and garages. After a state investigation found the organization didn't have internal controls to catch Kanganese misuse of funds, Hill says Transpo's board of directors was restructured to create more oversight. Hill says she's also done a lot of work with the union to improve morale. Bus mechanic Ryan Candler says it's working. Even if there's like something that's hard or difficult to talk about, you can work out something to resolve it. Union grievances are down 95% over the past two years, and that seems to have had an effect on ridership. Hill says ridership was up about 3% in October and November. One and two back to you, and you have a great day. Um, we still have a long way to go. We know there, there's a need for additional service. To figure out what that service should look like, Transpo is launching a customer survey, the first one in almost 10 years. Hill is also working on a comprehensive operational analysis to look at the system as a whole. Are there current sections of routes that aren't being utilized? Are there other areas where we're not meeting that need? Hill says there are a few areas that have spotty bus service, including the Blackthorn area, which is seeing a lot of new investment and employers. One of their big concerns is, are we going to have transportation available to get our employees to and from work? But adding routes and making more frequent stops costs a lot of money. A pilot program for Sunday service could cost at least a million dollars. More riders typically means more funding, but you need money to improve service to attract those riders. A lot of it comes from the Indiana Public Mass Transit Fund. That hasn't seen a significant increase in investment in years. There's always a lot of uncertainty about the federal dollars that we'll receive. So while she completes her operation analysis and figures out what Transpo can afford, Hill is focused on low-hanging fruit, things she can work on right now. If we can make some minor adjustments to a particular route that doesn't necessarily incur additional cost, that's easy to do. Hill is confident Transpo's future looks bright. And these riders know while they wait for those upgrades, the bus is better than walking. It'll get you from point A to point B. Wherever I need to go, you know, I can always catch the Transpo. See you. Take care. Yeah, have Thank a good you. day. In South Bend, Caitlin Conan, WSBT 22 News.